OK, uh, so let's talk about the terrain analysis. So terrain analysis is a, is a kind of the uh, special type of the Rust data analysis, especially that is from the digital elevation models, so DEM. So on DEM, so each single cell contains the value of the elevation of that location. OK, so each single cell contains uh, the elevation of that location, so 0, 1, like that. And with those result, with those uh, values like elevations, so here let's we we ha we might have a hill here, um, and we, we might have a hole or lake here. With those elevations, now we can do some very simple um, analysis. So for example, we can calculate the slope. Okay, so we can calculate slope. So the result will be the rest rise slope values throughout it its extent. So the way that how we calculate the slope, so you can find out our textbook or you can or you can find out ArcGIS online uh, help um, information. So but the result will be a slope. So that is based on the DEM. Uh, we can also calculate the aspect. OK, so that is directions. So that, let's say that towards which direction that um, that place was fa is facing. So is that facing to north? Uh, to south, to west, or to the east. OK, so that is the aspect. And we can also calculate the hill sheet. Uh, hill sheet is a, it's a pretty interesting one. So that is relative relief based on the elevation of the desired uh, area. And that is that used to be commonly used to, to visualize the 3D nature on the 2D map. So in the past, <laughs> we calculate the sh hill sheet and we put that one beneath our real um, image or photos. And so that can give us a little bit 3D um, view. Uh, however, nowadays, uh, we can view everything that in a 3D like arc scene so that you can just create the 3D models and view it directly. So but in the past, so when we are limited to the computer resources, so that the hill sheet is a way that we can create those 3D effects on this 2D, on the 2D map. Uh, we can also calculate some view sheet so that it determine that which areas are visible from a specific location. So for example here we have this DEM. We see we have two uh, viewers or observers. Uh, those mo most in most cases those two should be the vector data so vector points. We also need to tell that the height of those observers and the output will be that, OK, so what areas are visible to those observers? OK, so those are also has some um, has been used, for example, if you want to check the, the view for specific areas, so like you, you want to have a nice view for your building. Or sometimes if you want to have a great coverage of your signal tower. And you can use the, uh, those view sheet analysis. Okay, uh, so let's see those examples in our ArcGIS Pro. So let's just turn on the elevation of the DEM. And if we go to the Rust functions, uh, you can see that in the, uh, there's a one section called Terrain Analysis, I believe, um, at the bottom. Oh, it's called Surface Analysis, where you can see you can do the you can calculate aspect. You can calculate the slope, or you can calculate the aspect and slope. You can calculate the hill sheet, and you can calculate the views sheet. So let's calculate the aspect. And let's bring the DEM and create a new layer. OK, uh, so now we have this aspect. You can see that it's degree from negative 1. I, I don't know why we have negative 1 from the 360. And I think uh, uh, 0 might stand for the uh, true nulls. Yes, 0 stands for true nulls. And also 180 stands for true south. OK. Uh, negative one might just be errors. I, I think just because those areas that we don't have any uh, values, so that's why we have negative one. Uh, we can also put that into a nice way. So for example, if we go to symbology and a vector field, 
okay? And here we choose magnitude, zero uh, direction, we choose the value from band one, okay? And now if you zoom in, okay, and you can see for each single cell, okay, so what is that direction? Okay, so what is that aspect? Okay, um, I think that's, that's pretty nice. Uh, so that is uh, vector, uh, the aspect. Uh, let's also calculate the slope. Okay, and which uh, we also bring the DM. For slope, uh, you can choose percentile, percentage rise or scaled or degree. So let's choose percentage raise, rise. Z factor, let's just use one. Okay, and now we have this slope. Okay, uh, we also have very interesting slope because we have those empty uh, areas that do not have any values. Uh, let's reclassify that one. So, uh, let's change the color. Sorry, give it color. Okay. Um, and now you can see the slope. Okay. Uh, so let's use different. Um, let's see standard deviations. Okay. That's uh, equal intervals. Okay, so that the percentile raise. Uh, basically, we can see that within those areas, that's that's pretty flat. Okay. Um, well, again, because we have those, um, we have some places that do not have any um, values, so that the slope looks like a little bit weird. Okay. Um, Okay, and um, finally, let's try the hill sheet. So let's click hill sheet, um, and let's bring the DEM, and we can use everything as default. And let's try to create a new hill sheet layer. Okay, um, so it's this may not be that intuitive, <laughs> uh, as uh, again because we have those um, noises, so. If you put that one beneath uh, the Landsat image, um, and if we change the Landsat image appearance, uh, okay, um, I'm not sure that will work actually. So, yeah, so, uh, so that will give some kind of the 3D effects. And again, here, uh, we are not using the very high uh, spatial resolution of both DEM and also the Landsat, so that uh, the effect may not be that obvious. Um, okay, uh, still we, we can still see a little bit effect. <laughs> uh, okay, um, and also I think the most important part is that because we have those uh, uh, those weird uh, uh, white and also black uh, stuff, so those noises, that because that was created when we export the, the data to our folder, so that's why we have those uh, data. So ideally, we can clip those one out um, uh, to our Harrisonburg um, only, so um, but here as a demo, so I, 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 I didn't do that. Okay, um, as, uh, as I showed earlier in this class, so we can also calculate a different type of the index, indexes. So it's like for urban analysis, for water project, etc. So those uh, index is really based on your domain knowledge and also based on the specific project, project you're working with. So here I just want to give you one example that is NDVI, Normalized Difference uh, Vegetation Index. Uh, so that has been widely used as an uh, index to see that um, the relative biomass. Okay, so if you have high values, then you have more uh, vegetations, uh, vegetables, vegetations, and if you have low values, then that means you have uh, fewer vegetations. And the calculation is um, depending on which software you are using. So I guess uh, from S3, so that is defined as 
the value in the near infrared minus the reflection in the red band divided by the value that the reflection in the near infrared plus the value in the red band and multiple 100 and also plus 100. So that's really depending on which package you are using. So this is from the S3. Um, and for different tools, they may use a slightly different version of the calculation. But basically, they are using the near infrared and also red band. So again, so if you have very extremely or negative values, that means there's no vegetation at all. And if you have high values, that means uh, it can be something like a forest or it has a place that has a lot of vegetations. Okay, so let's see one example in ArcGIS. Okay, so here uh, we go to our Landsat image, which has uh, a lot of the band information. Uh, so there are two ways. So if you go to the imagery, uh, go to the indexes, and you can see you can call NDVI, so that's the first one. And you will see there are also a lot of other indexes that, again, really depending on the project you are working on. And all if you go to the uh, raster uh, functions, I think at the bottom, at the top, the so analysis, and also you can see the NDVI. Okay, so let's try the NDVI analysis from here. And let's say we want to use the uh, length set. Or we can just simply, let's just simply click use this one. Okay, and uh, so now you can see we have this NDVI result, and we can give different colors. Uh, so for example, here we're going to give it classify. Uh, let's give it a red color. Oh, green color, sorry, uh, green color. Okay, and I think we should give it the reverse green color. Okay. So here we can see that high values will have uh, will be uh, will will have dark green, and if you compare that one with uh, uh, landscape images, you can see that we places that have a lot of trees will have high values. Okay. Uh, so that is NDVI index. I think the purpose of this class is that first introduce those different type of the most commonly used Rust data analysis. Um, and there's no one that can remember all those Rust data analysis. Um, similarly, there's no one that can remember all those um, vector data analysis. So after those two weeks, so um, those are just really introduct introduction to those spatial analysis is a vast data and also uh, vector data. So vector data is in this geoprocessing toolbox and the Rust data analysis is in this Rust function. Uh, so you don't need to remember all those analyses. Um, in most cases, you just search on the online tutorial and also on the um, ArcGIS uh, S3 uh, official document to find out the analysis that you want to use. I think the most important part is that understand those analysis and also see that how you can use those analysis to resolve the real world problems. Okay, so that is something that you, you really need to think about.